What is up guys, Conorix here, and today's video is actually a short and simple guide on how to implement the IPN system on your website so that you can accept and uh, you know process payments from PayPal on your website. For example, if you have a premium uh, account system or if you're selling stuff on your website, it's a really easy way to do it. So let's just get started right here. I'm on the uh, PayPal website. This is the default page you uh, end up on when you log in. And in order to activate IPN uh, system on your account, you have to go in profile right here. Give it a second and there you go. In my selling tools, on the getting paid and managing my risk, there is instant payment notification. So that's the system we're gonna use to uh, uh, make the system work in some kind of automated fashion. So if you already have, have it set up like I have, it's gonna look like this. Otherwise you can you know add something. And here's what it looks like. You can add the uh, URL of the page that uh, PayPal, sister, PayPal system is gonna contact and go on anytime that there is a transaction using PayPal. So if, let's say someone pays uh, to buy something on your website through PayPal, PayPal is going to contact this page and the way it works is that it'll send all the information. Uh, once that happens, uh, your website will send all the information back to PayPal with a bit of more, something more, but let's just not get into too much into details here. And then uh, just verify that everything is legitimate. And uh, if it is, PayPal will send back a verified or stat test, verified status. Otherwise it's gonna go and say it's uh, denied or whatever it is that uh, invalid I think it is. So that's the way the uh, IPN system works. So yeah, just wanna add the URL of the page that PayPal's gonna contact once there's a payment uh, right here. And the IPN messages you have to enable that so you can receive IPN messages on that spe specific page. And then click save. And the next thing we'll do is set up that page. So here we are. This is uh, what the basic script that I have uploaded and that I'm giving you the download link to in the description. That's what it looks like. Oh, sorry about that. I'm gonna get a bit of a sip of that soda. All right. So this is what this basic script looks like. There is nothing to change in the step one for any basic uh, usage. Um, and the step two, the only thing that might uh, you might want to change is to change and to add a sandbox.paypal.com instead of just paypal.com right here. If you're using the developer tool uh, sandbox, the sandbox tool on the PayPal's website in order to test uh, if uh, your system is working properly. So if you're doing that and you just want to add this right here, otherwise it's not going to work. And uh, once you go live on your, with your website and your system, just want to go ahead and remove that. So that's really all there is to change in the step two, unless you're using Womp like it says here, but I'm not, so let's just keep going. So here's the uh, validation result and uh, actions. That's where everything happens. That's where you're gonna be coding a bit more. So here it is. It uh, just verifies that the everything is legitimate and everything works fine the payment is verified and uh, after which you have your variables here <clears throat> sorry I've been a bit having a bit of trouble with my throat <clears throat> so yeah here, here you're getting all your variables so item name will be the uh, item purchased item number payment status uh, would be let's say uh, what it is I don't even remember uh, completed or something like that or pending or whatever it is now here's MC gross or MC gross one it really depends on uh, which payment uh, method the uh, user uses to pay for whichever thing he buys sometimes it's gonna be MC gross sometimes the variable is gonna be MC gross one so I just wrote this really sim simple uh, condition so it tests if it's null or not and if it isn't if it is, uh, it goes into MC Gross one. If it it's not, it just goes into MC Gross. So MC Gross is uh, 
the gross amount uh, and gross price of your item. So what their the user is gonna pay. Payment currency is the uh, currency code. Let's say USD or CAD or GBP. I think for UK something like that. Um, this is right here. This is the transaction ID, uh, which we're gonna talk about a bit later. And the receiver email. So the email of the uh, PayPal account which is receiving the money, which would be your account or your website's account. This is the account of the person who's paying, so payer email. And this right here, if uh, if you if you got a custom field on your button or on your PayPal thing, um, this is what it is going to be. Let's say you add your username, a username field, so that people can get their account, upgrade their account to a premium account. They have to enter their username, so that's where it's going to be. It's going to end up in uh, the custom variable. And here is where you're gonna want to insert your actions. So the basic things you want to be doing is check that the item is correct. So the item name or is correct. Item number is correct. Check that the payment status is, I believe, it is completed or something like that. You only want to do this when your page is uh, completed. When your payment is completed, uh, you'll want to be adding that as a condition. So let's say if um, payment status is equal to completed so that would test if your thing is completed and the payment is uh, alright everything is done so that would be in this if right there and else you can do whatever you want there's not really a use for else on this page in PayPal's automated system it's the only thing that's gonna land on this page and otherwise you might want to do uh, I don't know they're not gonna do much anyway and uh, another thing you want to be testing is the MC gross, so the um, payment amount. So let's say uh, you're charging, I don't know, 50 bucks for whatever it is you're selling. You want to test pay, pay, um, payment amount, which is the gross amount. And you just want to go, go ahead and put 50 there if you're charging two, charging two bucks. Two bucks here, if you're charging five, five, you know, a very simple thing. Um, next, what you want to test is, of course, the payment currency. You you don't want to be uh, getting payments for like two USD box, uh, two USD instead of two CAD, so Canadian box and uh, US box. You know, it's because there's of course a uh, you know it's not the same value, so the payment is not going to be exactly the same. So you want to test the payment currency as well. Uh, a very important thing to test is the transaction ID. So uh, you have to test. Uh, you have to add a something in, in a table in your database, which is gonna have in a, all the transaction IDs of every transaction you've uh, processed through your website and with your PayPal, because otherwise the uh, something that your user could do is uh, use an old transaction ID somehow and uh, be able to go ahead and not pay again but have the uh, you know maybe get their pre their account upgraded to premium again without having to pay only by using an old transaction ID so that's why you have to test and see if the uh, transaction ID has been used before and if you're if you've processed this transaction before then you Obviously, don't want to go ahead and uh, do everything you want to do with uh, when people pay. So that's one really important thing to test. Let's say if uh, transaction ID is uh, just add some stuff here, blah blah blah. Test to database, and yeah. So just add this right here. Oh, don't know what happened. Wrong, wrong shortcut. <laughs> so yeah, uh, another thing you want to be testing is the receiver email. Obviously, you want to be the one who gets paid when you're selling stuff. So you just test that the receiver email is yours. So let's say receiver email. Let's say your email is uh, user at hotmail com. Then you want to make sure that uh, this is what the receiver email is set to. 
And after that, you can do pretty much everything you want. Once the basic stuff is tested and everything seems legitimate, uh, you can make sure, uh, once you've made sure that everything is good, you can go ahead and log in onto your uh, your database. So let's say include some kind of uh, MySQL login like I have on my website. You can log into your database. Actually, you might want to do that earlier since you're testing against your transaction ID, but still. Uh, so yeah, you want to include your database connection and then maybe, I don't know, upgrade or use an update query. Query goes here. Let's say if you're using a yeah, the system to upgrade people's account to premium or if you're selling stuff maybe insert that insert into query so you can have the uh, transaction uh, like saved on your website and uh, it can add into the stuff you have to send to your users otherwise uh, you can use probably mail function that's that might be useful if you want to notify people that the, the, the uh, transaction has uh, been successful and if it's not, you might want to put that in the house right here if it's invalid. And uh, that's pretty much uh, everything I have to say on this. Hopefully this helped. I know uh, I have to thank someone on uh, Stack Overflow for this stuff. So yeah, thanks to Arash Milani on the Stack Overflow for helping out with the uh, sample code right here. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys... Uh, have success in your sales through PayPal using the IPN system. Thanks a lot and I'll see you next time.